What's up, comicbook.com? BD here right now. We're talking DC League and Super Pets. We got a very special guest. I'm very excited. Friend of the site, producer of DC League and Super Pets, Hiram Garcia. Hiram, man, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, my friends. Good to talk to you. Dude, always good to talk to you. I want to start at the beginning of League of Super Pets. Seven Bucks, Warner Brothers, you guys are doing animation now in the DC world. Tell me what, how this idea come to be. When did this first come to, uh, to, to be this that we're about to see come to fruition? Yeah, so uh, look, bud, you know that we love the comic book world. We love DC. So it's, it's always been a priority for me, Danny Dwayne. Um, to do as much as we can and be able to tell stories in this space. So right around the time when we were filming Red Notice, um, you know, uh, got a call from our agent. And it was funny. I, I actually took a little bit of offense to it because he goes, look, there's, a, there's something going on over here that these guys are working on. And are you familiar that Superman's got a dog? I'm like, crypto, of course I know Superman's got a dog. Do you not see in my background Superman? It's there's there's a there's an understanding there. So I was fired up right away when I realized that there was an opportunity to tell the league, the story of the league of super pets, uh, and kind of get into this deep cut, if you would, in the DC universe, being able to tell the story about um the pets of these great superheroes, right? And there's always, you're always looking for fun ways to tell stories about characters that the world's familiar with, but the perspective from their pets was really intriguing. And uh, obviously we were working on Black Adam, which is uh, a tone in itself where it's very edgy, it's a bit dark, uh, aggressive, and we liked the idea of being able to tell a story that was on the other side of the spectrum, a little bit more family-oriented, kid-friendly, um, something that the adults can get but still plays strong for the kids. And we felt like we had a really good opportunity with that with DC League of Super Pets. And they had a great team that was already assembled, you know, Jared Stern, um, Patty Hicks, who's uh, the, the producer over there, that became our producing partner on this. And before you know it, we were deep in it, assembling this great team of amazing voice characters to bring this world to life. Hell yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do. You mentioned the tone uh, being, being kid-friendly and for, for adults. I've noticed that a lot of stuff DJ's been doing recently, well, even when it's the more mature stuff, he's learning that, that comedy vein is fully beaten hard, man. He's, he got, you guys haven't missed a beat when you're making people laugh. And I'm curious, where do you think this is going to fit on that spectrum of comedy? Because I, I, I've loved seeing DJ play a bit of a self-awareness, kind of like this, this super funny guy. And you got people like Kevin Hart. Those two are getting a little too comfortable together. Uh, where, where is this going to stack up on that spectrum? Look, I think it's it, the, the movie's a, a big fun ride. There's the, it's it's funny that the cast is so talented. Kate McKinnon as a villain, you, you know what you're going to get, right? She's brilliant and she makes Lulu so much fun. But anytime you can put DJ and Kevin together, you know you're in for a fun ride. And that was what we were looking to do on here. There's a lot of heart in this. It's a great superhero story coming from the pet's uh, vantage point. But at the end of the day, you're just going to have a lot of fun and you're going to have a lot of laughs. And for us, there was a big appeal in this as big animal lovers and we all have dogs and cats and so forth to be able to tell a story about this from the perspective of you know probably the most powerful owner in the world and the most powerful pet in the world um and then also be able to touch on the idea of shelter or pets finding homes finding that perfect home and finding that soulmate that they can go and be with and give so much comfort to it just speaks to so many of the things that we love at seven bucks and that we love just as being pet owners so th th this this story was hitting on a lot of points for us and and uh to be able to do that and bring together this cast and have as many laps as we did it's a it's a home run for us yeah i mean you mentioned the cat also the fact that this cast you have so many people in this cast who have played other superheroes themselves already black adam mr fantastic ghost rider <laughs> uh titania is about to debut sonic the hedgehog i count him as a superhero yeah uh, yeah, yeah. What, I, I love to hear about behind the scenes putting all these people together What's the vibe? I don't know if people really even got to work together because I know it's it's voice acting. But are you guys swapping any secrets? Is it is it a good vibe? What, what was the production like for you guys? It, well, it was a great vibe, and it was tough because we were you know we were making this during COVID. So um, fortunately, animation is a little bit easier to uh, push along during all the stuff that was going on with COVID. You know, a lot of it was happening remote, but the challenge was was a lot of you know, um, ADR and, and voice coaching and recording going on in people's homes. So we were sending kits everywhere. Uh, the actors were amazing. <laughs> they were going to great lengths to help us as we were coaching them to like set up, you know, mattresses and do a TP and seal it off and blankets over it to try oh, and make real. it as, you know, soundproof as possible. Um, and, you know, we, you know, DJ at one point was, uh, you know, we were sending him kits. He was working to set it up. Kevin was in another country, but they all came together. They all worked together in a great way. And you'd love to sometimes get these guys in person. We weren't able to get Kevin and DJ in person until the very end. 
but um we had a great team doing this and 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 even though there were some challenges with it it was it was a lot of fun and we were able to do some pretty good stuff with with remote access and zoom and all that stuff to help pull it together and and get get a movie that we're very proud of nice. i gotta ask did did krasinski spill it that he's that he's the new mr fantastic for a minute there he did it man he keeps it tight <laughs> he keeps it tight emily didn't spill it either uh you know they're both very close friends and, and they kept it tight but um like you said, we've have we have a great cast here who have all been heroes in their own right. Yeah. And you know, one of the first things we did when we when we kind of came onto this project and we started looking at it was like, you know what, we need a great ace. And uh, and Kevin was right at the top of the list. We made that call right away. And you know, Kevin's such a gamer. He he's doing a million things, but you come to him with a great idea and an idea to give. Uh, DJ a hard time and bust his chops the whole way. He's like, oh, I'm in. I'm in right away. Just just give me the lines and I can start busting his chops and making things hard for him. Uh, and, and from there, everything just started to fall in place. Let's not act like all of you don't have the most insane schedules I've ever seen. I don't know when you all <laughs> squeeze in sleep. I, I know DJ is drinking Terramana and moving weights at he like is. four in the He's morning. mixing them up. <laughs> I, so I imagine that's just all of you over there at seven bucks just never resting. And, but, I, but we appreciate it. We get, into, we get hugely entertained by it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. With Super Pets, like this, you guys have been working with DC for Black Adam for a long time now, and now Super Pets comes in. It's not part of like the DC EU. You get like total freedom to do whatever you want with characters. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear about the process of like selecting DC characters, whether it's cameos or main characters, and casting them when you have the total freedom of a new world versus what you did with Black Adam and having to fit that into an already existing franchise. Yeah, well, look, you know, with, with the Super Pets, you know that you wanted to base it in the Justice League, right? But it was fun to explore some variations in the Justice League. You know, I, I, I really like the idea of, of our Aquaman, you know, kind of drafting off of the Aquaman in the comics that had lost his hand. I thought there was something fun to do in there. Uh, I like the idea of using Jessica Cruz as a Green Lantern. You know, there was just, it was fun to mix it up. And look, the Justice League is, you know, as popular of a league as you get when it comes to the comic book world. And obviously, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, you know, they're, they're the most iconic heroes in the world. So to, to try and take any little twist you can on them and do a slight spin on it um, and show audiences a slightly different perspective that they haven't seen before is really is really exciting for us. And obviously, you know, the story is really about the pets, but uh, the bit that we do get to see the rest of the group in there to give a fresh take on them and unique versions of those characters was really appealing to us. How, how's Keanu going to stack up against other bad actors? I mean, come on. You can see he's Keanu Reeves. I mean, I think the minute you hear him on that trailer, you know he's already one of the greatest Batman you've ever heard. Uh, and I got to tell you, I remember when we did our first Zoom with him, because everything, you know, is Zoom. But, you know, just to pitch him the idea, he was so game and so excited at the idea to play Batman. And the minute his voice slotted in, uh, it was just like, oh, there he is. It's perfect. And, you know, we played this Batman. He, he's got some funny nuance to him. And, and Keanu just tapped right into it in a really great way. I'm going to I'm gonna free you of, of, of Keanu being the bias. Live action, who's your favorite Batman? Is that something you're, you can uh, answer? It, it's, 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 it's really hard. I got to say that, look, in the business we're in, you know, I appreciate all the different versions. So there's so many things that I like about each one. Obviously, Adam West is iconic and you grow up with him when you're as old as I am. Um, and then Keaton was the one that kind of cut through. I'll never forget when that when that Keaton Batman came out um, at a young age, that was like the first like gigantic, I just never remember feeling a push like that for a movie when that Batman movie came out. Um, but then look, you know, Bale was great and, and Affleck was great. And I gotta say, I really thought Pattinson did a phenomenal job as Batman. I thought he was so good in the Batman and that version of Batman uh, looked great in the suit. Uh, you know, I, I dug the the Western vibe. I, I appreciate what each one of them brings together. Keaton will always be a favorite for me because I think that was when my, my memory was first, like my first big movie memory. But, uh, but I got to give a tip of the hat to all these guys for what they've done to the character, and especially a character that's so beloved for them to each put their own imprint on it and, and leave an imprint in society in terms of everyone has their own Batman. Um, big kudos to all those guys. Yeah, they're all, they're all so different and unique. It's, it's impossible to pick one. It really is. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Now, now, I know you guys are seven bucks. When you guys work with people, you guys seem to have a culture where people enjoy working together. You have, I don't want to call it recycling, but you, you work with the same people. 
you, you, you guys it. are becoming we a do. family, and that's that's shown we in the do. cast here. I loved here with Super Pets. Are you guys already talking to the cast? I know you guys have something coming with Emily already. Like, yeah. is there anything you guys are already looking like? Hey, we want to work with you again. We had a great time that you're already put move putting the pieces oh. in place. Of course, we, we wouldn't be good uh, producers if we at least didn't have a vision of where we'd like to go and a big ambition for what we want to do. We never like to uh, get too far ahead of ourselves because obviously it's the fans that dictate, you know, if we get to dance again. But we do really enjoy uh, repeat business, right? I think it's very hard uh, making movies. It's really hard to get a movie made. And, um, you know, you were very kind to allude to what our work schedule can be like. And so when you're working that hard, you want to do it with people you like. So we try our best to keep in our atmosphere and in and, and, and our world, um, those people that we get along with well, that become family. And that's why you see so much repeat business with us, with those individuals, because it's, it's a family business. And, and and if you can go and tell stories and do it with people you like and love, I think that's a real privilege to be able to, to, to have that in your in your daily work life. And that's definitely something we strive for. So we do have ambitions for where we want to go. Obviously, you know, we want to be big players in the DC universe. We have big ambitions for what we'd like to do, um, you know, with the Super Pets franchise, just like we do for Black Adam. And, uh, uh, you know, hopefully the fans receive it in, in a way that allows us to do that. Hey, I'm just saying, if you ever got, if you guys ever make DJ's Black Adam come face to face with Superman. There's got to be a joke about Superman, that, like be like you're like a pet to me. You know, there's, <laughs> there's got to be something like that now. Somehow we got to tie. <laughs> somehow we got to tie them together, right? Who knows? We got to we got to figure have out. To, have to. <laughs> so well, I, I do want to ask, like, w when you're developing a DC franchise, does Warner Brothers say, like, are you allowed to say, like, hey, it'd be fun to have a cool cameo, and you got away with them, or is there anywhere they were like, hey, that's a character we don't want to touch yet for whatever reason? No, look, I mean, it's it's that's the fun thing about telling these comic book stories is uh, we all have big ambitions and you got to figure out a way to meet in the middle. And uh, I think that seven bucks, especially, you know, Danny, Dwayne and myself, um, we it's always a challenge when you have comic book fans as big as we are that are filmmakers because we have a lot of things we want to do. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of things we want to do. We got a lot of stories we want to tell. We want to start to build stuff out. So it's a force of nature when we come in there because we're not the filmmakers that aren't really familiar with the world that are just taking characters. We're like, oh no, we know this storyline. Remember this comic book and we want to do this, but we want to do a crossover. And so um, I will say that, uh, you know, look, Warner Brothers has been a great partner to us and and they they know uh, in getting in business with us, part of the fun of getting business with us is we put a lot of passion and heart into our projects and we have big ambitions for the kind of storytelling we want to do to take care of the fans and to just have, tell you know, just to be able to tell good stories. So um, they did a really good job of, of allowing us to, to kind of spread our wings and swing for the cameos we wanted, the stuff we wanted to do. And I think we all were able to then take a step back and look at the product and, and be like, you know what, we... Uh, that worked out well. We're happy the way it worked out, and we appreciate you guys taking a swing for that, and, and we, we thank them for giving us opportunity to do it. Yeah, I can't wait to get my eyes on this movie. All right, now, <laughs> about this Saturday, I'm going to get my eyes on Comic-Con. Uh, this is you guys' first uh, yeah. time doing Hall H. You got Black Adam. Are you ready? What, what, can, we, what can we expect from, from Comic-Con? What do you expect? Well, look, it's it's we have done Comic-Con, but it's been so long, I feel like, since we've done it. I can't even remember when we last went. I don't know if it was like Hercules or something like that, but what I do know is that we've always wanted to go to Comic-Con with comic book content. <laughs> we've always wanted to go with heroes or anti-heroes, however you want to put it. So this is so exciting for us to be able to go to Comic-Con and bring this kind of content over there for the fans, get the fans fired up with what we've been cooking. Um, and there's nothing better than seeing DJ in front of a live audience. You know, that's where... Uh, he cut his teeth. You can go all the way back to football, then to wrestling. But when he's in front of a live crowd, you know he's going to bring it. You know he's going to do something special. And we got some good plans for uh, Comic Con and Hall H. So I'm excited for you to be there. I'm excited for you to witness it because then we'll we'll talk about it afterwards and ha have some fun circling up because I think it's going to get you fired up. Yes, sir, man. Can't wait to see Super Pets. Can't wait <laughs> to see Black Adam. Thank you for the time, Hiram. Always a pleasure. Always, bud. I appreciate it. And I'll see you over at Comic Con.